Well, speaking of penis and vagina, I have one thing. Oh, never mind. Okay, it's a high, so I won't say it yet. Oh, uh, what is it? Is it? Oh, it's what? actually something that the mentally challenged kid says. What? And he goes, oh, I look at her and she makes my penis sneeze. I say, bless you, penis. <laughs> <laughs> he says that. that <laughs> you know what? Maybe I have two highs because that actually was funny. That was a funny line. God bless you. Thank you. No, not you stupid. When my penis sneezes, I say, God bless you. God bless you, penis. Well, he actually has another one, too, that I just watched when you watched one of the previews. I was like, oh, I didn't write that down, but that was good. What was it? Oh, when the girlfriend character comes to confront J-Lo and she slits her wrist and he's like, you need the Band-Aids. <laughs> you know, there was, he had a, he, Brian's probably And he, you know who he's channeling? Who? Oh, it's so obvious now. Who? You need some Band-Aids. I like pita. I like pita. Oh, Fucking, he's, doing, uh, he's doing Michael, Michael Keaton, Keaton from, from Multiple City? Yeah. I like pita. I like it. We're going to need a cage. Yeah, well, that that character. That's who he's playing. <laughs> I like Steve. The he actually the only other thing that I thought was kind of funny, and this this get this is kind of in this scene. So the the penis vagina monologue. My my thought is is that this almost almost feels like it could have worked in a better movie because again, this is actually not a bad piece of writing. It's actually kind of an interesting piece of writing that that happens between you know a heterosexual male and a, a lesbian woman, um, where he's like you know the penis and the the design and you know that whole, and like he goes in this whole thing and then she turns it around on him like what do you want to kiss you want to kiss lips what are lips they are the they are the um twin sister of the mm-hmm. vagina and she goes in this and it's actually really not a bad piece of writing but the thing that pisses me off about it is that I don't buy Affleck as a gangster who spouts off highly articulate and verbose monologues about genitalia because exactly what we were just saying before as it stands, they've established him as a guy who doesn't own a fucking book. Mm-hmm. When Brian, to when Brian is like, read to me, Larry, he ha- he doesn't have a book in the house, so he has to take the Tabasco sauce and read the label, which, to be fair, actually is a funny scene mm-hmm. when he's reading the Tabasco thing. And, and my favorite thing is the kid's reaction. He's like, that was good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For well over a century, the adventurous flavor of Tabasco sauce has fired up generations of thrill seekers. Okay. Was good. But again, it's like it's like it's like a piece of writing that doesn't fit the movie. It's like these two characters kind of linguistically combating each other in this way, where he's like, "Oh, the penis is is a perfect design," and all all these lesbians they fucking have to invent these machines to give them what they're not getting, and blah blah blah. And then she turns it around on him, and the whole time she's like doing this sexy yoga and like you know hot pants. Like it's it's. It almost feels like it belongs. I don't think she's trying to make it sexy. I think it's just that it's like she's J Lo, so she just. I think they're absolutely trying to make this sexy. There's no, but it's also J Lo. It's like she's actually just doing yoga, but she's J Lo with her J Lo body. Right, but so D, it's this like, is this is the whole. It sexual, doesn't take much for you to look at it and, and take it as sexual because she has she like a be very eating, courageous she body. She could be eating and, chicken during the scene. Like they perfect, they purposely picked her to be doing yoga in the moonlight. Fine, like but it's I'm supposed to be from sexy. Her, to be fair. I don't think she had to try too hard to make it right. Sexy I understand. You're saying, you're saying she could be picking her toenails and it would it'd be sexy. You know? but, what I, but what I'm saying is that the scene is supposed to play on sexual tension and the writing is supposed to play on sexual tension. And it's not, to, to be fair to the movie, it's not a bad scene. It doesn't fit the movie they're making. Larry Geely is not this smart or articulate. All of a sudden, he's talking like a fucking philosopher. And, and it doesn't make any sense because he's a fucking knucklehead the whole movie. Being like, I'm the fucking bull. You're the cow. I'm the fucking salt and the fucking cool. It's like, so how are you talking? And I think even at one point she says like, oh, you act like you don't read books. It's like, he doesn't read books. He doesn't have a fucking book in his house. He's reading Tabasco labels. This is bullshit. So it's kind of a cheat. It's kind of like something that was lifted. Like Martin Bress could have taken this piece of writing and put it in a better movie and not put it in this piece of shit. <laughs> so I'm not saying this is a high, but it's a low because of how it doesn't fit the movie. It could have been a high in another movie, I would say. 